Hi everyone, Menachem Brody here with you once again from Human Vortex Training, your certified and experienced USA Cycling expert level coach and strength and conditioning coach. Here today to talk to you about CTL, ATL, and TSB. What is this? ATL? Well, that's got to be Atlanta, right? No. What about the CTL? Cathedral of Learning at Pitt? No. TSB? Uh, not even sure about that one. These numbers show up in your performance manager in your WKO. What do these mean and what stands behind them? Well, let's get into that a little bit. Before we get into that, if you have not yet watched the video on training stress score or intensity factor, I strongly recommend you go watch those first and then come back. Uh, I'll wait for you. It's alright. It's good coffee. Chemex, you should do that. Alright, you're back. Cool. Let's go. Four. Acute training load, what this is, is your average training stress from the last seven days, technically, but really it's the last two weeks. This is the um, impact that your last two weeks of training is going to have on your body. This combines with your chronic training load, or CTL, and what that is is your training from the last 42 days or three months. So we're just looking at the big overall. Chronic is long term, acute is short term, because it's really cute, just kidding. Uh, what this does is the acute training load has a direct correlation with your training stress balance. So you'll notice that the pink line, or the purple line if you will, the ATL, is in a direct opposition to the TSB, the yellow line. And what this does is tell us how big of a hole are you digging and how negative are you. This is important because in order for us to drive the chronic training load up over time to allow us to get to that, that optimal point, which for professionals is going to be between 110 and 145, 150. Uh, some coaches will say between 100 and 150, 55. In order to get to that optimal chronic training load where your body's uh, able to have that form, we need to have a, a certain amount of chronic training load. So over time, we're slowly driving that chronic training load up and up and up. The important thing with this is that we really can't apply too much training stress over a week. So we're really looking at keeping you with working days and recovery days. So you should see over a course of time, at least in the HVT approach, that your chronic training load or that blue line kind of comes up a little bit and comes down, it comes up a little bit, comes down, comes up a lot after a training camp or a big weekend ride or weekend of rides and it comes down a little bit. What we want to do over the course of a periodized block, a properly periodized block, is actually allow you to stress the body and then recover. It takes your body between 7 and 10 days, let's say, to digest the workout that you do today. So you're actually not getting in better shape until after the body has had the opportunity to digest or, or adapt to the training that you've just done. So it's really important that we keep an eye on that yellow line and make sure it doesn't plunge too deep. Now, in order for us to be in good form for a race, there's actually a range. So it doesn't necessarily have to be zero and it doesn't necessarily have to be slightly positive. I've had racers, uh, I can think of two. One of them, he does, or yeah, he does best when he's at a slightly negative, about negative seven to negative 12 training stress score. Those are his best races. Whereas if he goes any more fresh than that, he just, he doesn't have the sharpness that he needs. I have another rider and she is best at zero to positive six, positive five and she feels her best, anything below negative two, and she feels awful. So it really is individualized, and this is why it's great to train and race with a power meter for those of you who are more competitive, or if you're looking for fitness and health benefits, it's a great way for you to make sure that you're taking uh, rest periods when you need it. Because what's great about the human being is our brain, if we think it, we can achieve it. But that can lead us into overreaching, or uh, hopefully not ever overtraining. Uh, the difference between overreaching and the overtraining is a subject of another video, but that's a whole other subject. But the TSB, the training stress balance, is the yellow line, the chronic training lo load is the blue line, and the ATL is the purple line. We want to use these three to make sure that we're properly increasing our chronic training load over time and taking breaks or rests or decreased stress on the body to allow the training stress balance to come up. So over the course of a properly periodized season, we should see with each training block each week the chronic training load kind of comes up, then it drops a little bit, comes up, and it drops, comes up, and then we take a recovery week and you're going to see that come down a little bit and then we start building back up. So be almost uh, like steps as you go through your season. 
Uh, this is important for you guys to know because it allows you to really tap into the full power that that power meter gives you for your training and racing. No more guessing, am I in shape or not? No more guessing, do I need more recovery time or not? No more guessing, my legs feel kind of stale for the last week, what should I do? Oh, everybody's going fast, so I might as well. It allows you to tap in and understand what your body needs and what it's capable of right now, as well as are you training properly? Are you seeing a straight line? You're stagnant? Or are you going out and doing the same workouts two or three days a week and you feel good? You feel like you're going somewhere, but when we actually look at your chronic training load, we see it's straight or even slightly downsloping. That means that we're actually losing fitness. So even though you feel good on the bike, you're not going anywhere. So this is your overview of chronic training load, acute training load, and training stress balance. Leave your questions down below. You can also subscribe which is going to be great because we have tons more videos for you guys if you don't already see it. Winter training, information about training with power, uh, a lot of stuff about cadence as well, and strength and conditioning exercises that you can use to help you maximize, including foam rolling, upper body, which is very important for cyclists. So check out our other videos. Our Facebook page is Human Vortex Training on Facebook. And until next time, remember, train smarter, not harder, and it is all about you and coffee and you.